when you are given feedback on improving your performance, don't overgeneralize from it. Like, I didn't do the three-point turn well, I'll never be a driver. Or, that movement class didn't go very well, I'll never be an actress. Give yourself credit for the things you have achieved in the past. Some people find it very useful to use positive self-talk, like, that exercise didn't go very well, but it is only one exercise. I can do better, I will do better. The human brain isn't very good at monitoring itself. It finds it especially hard to know when it's getting better at something. This is when our old friend feedback comes in. To make up for this reluctance to see progress, we must make sure that we get feedback. Keeping a learning journal is a great way of seeing what progress you're making towards your goals. Think back, you'll probably find that what was a goal, say last year, you hardly have to think about now. Your brain can't ignore the progress you're making when it's written down in black and white. So, write down your goals and make a note of any progress you make each time you work on them. Maybe the best kind of feedback is from our mistakes. It's not pleasant, but it's powerful, it's raw and it's real. We should make use of it. So the next time you get something wrong, try to get into the habit of thinking, where did I go wrong? What can I learn from it? Criticism can be a good teacher too. It's another great type of feedback. So even if your experience of criticism in the past has been bad, try not to let that stop you from learning from it now. Most of the time when people point out mistakes we've made, they're trying to help and not to hurt. It's a hard thing to get right, so rather than react badly to it, try and take it on board and to use it. Feedback is the key to building connections in our brains and it's central to learning. So take every chance you can to look for it. As well as helping you to learn, feedback can also help to highlight your strengths. When your abilities are being used in your life and your work, you feel fulfilled and happy. But without feedback, it's hard to isolate your personal strengths. Knowing your strengths can help you decide what to learn and the best way to learn. For example, if you're looking for a job, it helps if you are aware of your strengths, like the girls do knitting and sewing here, because then you can try and match them to the type of work you want to do. Skills are practical abilities which are gained or developed through training, experience or practice. Every job or activity requires particular skills. For example, builders need to lay bricks evenly and to have the ability to understand a building plan. Chefs need to learn which ingredients work well together and to understand the variety of ways in which to cook them. Athletes need to be fast, to be able to pace themselves and to breathe properly. Qualities, on the other hand, are characteristics which make us the kind of person we are. Athletes need to be committed and have determination. To be a good builder, it would help if you were reliable. But you may have qualities other than those required for your job. A builder may be honest and kind, but doesn't need those qualities to do a good job. So have you worked out your skills and qualities? Why not use the exercises in the workbook to help you out? Feedback doesn't have to be verbal. In fact, non-verbal feedback is very important in telling you how you're doing. It can be a smile, a laugh, even applause. Yeah, family are great, aren't they? For they an actress like moment. Elaine, the reaction of an audience they tells a thousand try, tales. Their silence can tell her she's engaging them. Their laughter, that she's entertaining them. And their applause, that she's got it just right. <laughs> Her learning experience over the past two years has changed Chris's outlook in many positive ways, as well as making her aware of her strengths. I'm a very happy person since I went back to school. Very happy and much more confident. I can write uh, letters to someone now, write cards, do anything I want, actually. I'm out of learning, 
If a situation had came up that I would have to be the leader, I would be capable of being the leader now. I had the confidence now. I can feel the improvement all the time. Even when I'm looking at things now, I look at things much different. Scenery I adore. I can visualise an artist and all painting it. Poetry. I love looking at people's poetry. If someone writes a letter to the local paper, I would say to myself, and they're very brave now to do that, before I would just take it for granted. Someone wrote it, didn't put... Now I know the effort that's got into writing. Uh, out of my learning, I'm looking for to educate myself so I can ed educate others. Charity work I'm involved with, I would love to be able to educate others. I'm not looking for no job out of it. I feel I'm too old to go to work. Beautiful, that's done now. The more I learn, the happier I'm getting. And life is beautiful now from it. Many words end in the shun sound. For instance, a theatre audience pays an admission fee to see a performance. Here's some tips on spelling words that end in that shun sound. There are a great many words which end with the shun sound. Nation, occasion, admission, electrician, Dalmatian. But as you can see, the word endings are spelt differently. So here are a few tips for telling them apart. The first thing to know is that any word which ends with a shun sound and is to do with someone's job is always spelt C-I-A-N. For example, optician, electrician, beautician. The second tip is that the majority of shun words end with T-I-O-N, and very many of them have an A before the T-I-O-N. A-T-I-O-N. For example, information, education, station, situation. One tip for telling the difference between words which end in T-I-O-N from those that end S-I-O-N is that those words ending in S-I-O-N mostly come from verbs ending in D, D-E, or S-E. So, for example, take the verb decide. To turn it into the noun decision, you replace the D-E with S-I-O-N. In the same way, suspend drops the D at the end and becomes suspension. If you have any questions or you'd like some help with anything we've covered in this or last week's programme, call the NALA free phone number. It's 1-800-20-20-65. Specially trained tutors are standing by to take your call from 10am to 4pm, Monday to Friday. Calls are free and confidential. Terry, you're back. How did you get on? Hey, Derek, I got on really well. I found out that feedback is absolutely essential for success on the stage. Funny, I found out the very same thing here. Listen, why don't we do a recap on what we did in today's programme? OK. Well, we looked at what feedback is all about and we realised how essential it was to keep people's efforts on track and also to give them a clear picture of their progress. We also looked at reading signs and symbols in the workplace. Most health and safety signs don't have words. They use symbols, so that people who speak different languages can understand them. Some of the more common ones are no smoking, caution and fire exit. Other signs relate to particular workplaces, such as hard hats must be worn, poisonous or corrosive materials. It is important to know what these signs mean. They're there for your safety. We looked at the functions of feedback. It tells you where you're doing well and where you might need to improve. And it motivates you by showing you that you have made progress. If you have a job, your employer has to give you a payslip. We gave you some tips on how to read one. PRSI stands for Pay Related Social Insurance. PRSI contributions are deducted by your employer and they entitle you to certain benefits. Everyone has their own PPS, or Personal Public Service Number. You'll need this number for all your dealings with all of the public services. Your gross pay, or gross income, is the amount you earn before tax, PRSI, or other deductions, whereas your net pay 
is the amount in your pay packet or bank account after all deductions. Feedback should work in both directions, for example, from tutor to learner and from learner to tutor. So accept advice, take guidance, but do ask questions and don't be afraid to express an opinion. Everybody has their own particular skills and strengths and feedback can help you to highlight your strengths. Knowing them will help you to work out the best way to learn. Skills are practical abilities which are gained or developed through training, experience or practice. For example, builders need to lay bricks evenly and have the ability to understand a building plan. Qualities, on the other hand, are characteristics which make us the kind of person we are. Athletes need to be committed and have determination. Chefs need perseverance. And to be a good builder, it would help if you are reliable. And as we saw with Elaine, feedback doesn't always have to be verbal. Smiles, laughs, applause, they're all very effective forms of feedback. And lastly, we gave you some tips on spelling words ending with the shun sound. Any word which ends with a shun sound and is to do with someone's job is always spelt C-I-A-N. For example, optician, electrician. Most shun words end with T-I-O-N and many of them have A before the T-I-O-N. For example, information, education, station. Words ending in S-I-O-N mostly come from verbs ending in D, D-E or S-E. So decide becomes decision and comprehend drops the D at the end and becomes comprehension. That's it for this week. Next week we'll be looking at planning and organising yourself for learning. But for now, from us... Until then, goodbye.